வணக்கம் இன்றைக்கு எங்கே வந்திருக்கிறேன் விட என்னத்துக்கு வந்திருக்கிறேன் நான் உங்களுக்கு சொல்கிறேன் இன்றைக்கு வந்து ஒரு ஆள் இல்லாமல் இயங்கக்கூடிய ஒரு வாகனத்தில் வந்து நான் ஏற போகிறேன் இது வந்து ஆர்ஏசி என்ற ஒரு காப்புறுதி நிறுவனத்தால் இயக்கப்படுற ஒரு வாகனம் வந்து அந்த வாகனத்தில் வந்து ஏறி இன்றைக்கு அதன் அனுபவம் எப்படி இருக்குன்னு பார்க்க போகிறேன் இதுதான் முதல் முதல் அனுபவம் குறிப்பாக வினோதமாக இருக்குது உங்களுக்கும் அப்படி தான் இருக்கும்னு நினைக்கிறேன் பார்ப்போம் அப்போ அந்த அனுபவத்தை இன்றைக்கு இது வந்து முற்றிலும் இலவசமானது ஆர்ஐசி வலைதளத்தில் போய் பதியலாம் பதிஞ்சு இலவசமாக போய் வரலாம் சின்ன பிள்ளைகள் இருந்தால் பெற்றோர்களோடு தான் போகணும் இப்படிப்பட்ட சின்ன நிபந்தனைகள் இருக்குது இந்த இடம் எங்கே என்று பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அதுக்கு வந்து ஏறுற இடம் வந்து அவ்வளோத்தடியெலாம் போய் காவல் நிற்கணும் அந்த இடம் வந்து இதுதான் பட்டணம் இது தெற்கு பேர்த்துன்னு சொல்கிறோம் சவுத் பேர்த் அதில் இருக்கக்கூடிய இந்த மைதானங்களோட அண்டி தான் அந்த இது இருக்குது அங்கே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அடுக்கு மாடி குடியிருப்புகள் அங்கே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அதில் தான் அந்த ஜெட்டி இருக்குது பேர்த்துக்கும் தெற்கு பேர்த்துக்கும் பெற்ற அந்த ஃபெரி எதுகள் வந்து போகிற இடம் இதிலெல்லாம் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அக்கள் நடமாதைகள் மிதி வண்டியோட கூடிய இடங்கள் எல்லாம் இருக்குது அங்கே பாபிக்கியூ போடுற விளையாட்டு மைதானங்கள் கழிப்பறைகள் என்று எல்லா வசதிகளும் இதில் இருக்குது தரிப்பிடங்களும் இருக்குது அங்காலையும் இருக்குது இஞ்சாலையும் இருக்குது உருப்பட்ட தரிப்பிடங்கள் அப்போ இந்த இடங்களில் தான் வந்து ஆக்கள் இந்த இடத்துல வந்து காவல் நிற்கணும் அந்த பேருந்தில் இருக்கு இது வந்து பேருந்துன்னு சொல்லி இல்லாது மகளுந்து சிற்றுந்துன்னு சொல்லி இல்லாது ரெண்டுக்கும் இடைப்பட்ட அளவுன்றதால் இதை வந்து நாங்கள் இடையூர்ந்துன்னு சொல்லுவோம் இப்போ அதில் போய் காவல் நிற்போம் இன்றைக்கு இது வேறு விட்டுட்டு உங்களுக்கும் இந்த அனுபவம் புதுசாக தான் இருக்கும் நினைக்கிறேன் பார்ப்போம் இதில் வந்து அந்த அந்த இடையூர்ந்து இந்த மாதிரி படம் போட்டிருக்கீனம் அது சம்மந்தமான விளக்கமும் போட்டிருக்கீனம் எங்கெங்கே அந்த கண்காணிப்பு கருவிகள் உணரிகள் பூகோள மையப்படுத்திகள் அதாவது வந்து ஜிபிஎஸ் இதுகள் வந்து எங்கே இருக்குது என்ற விவரங்கள் அது எப்படி எங்குது என்றது அவ்வளோ விவரமாக இல்லாட்டிலும் ஓரளவு உங்களுக்கு தெரியும் இந்த படத்தை பார்க்கல இதுதான் அந்த குட்டி அலுவலக மாதிரி இதில் தான் வந்து பதிவு செய்யணும் நீங்கள் வந்துட்டீங்களன்றதை இதில் இருந்து காவல் நிற்கணும் காவல் நிற்க பே இடையூர்ந்து வேற நீங்கள் உள்ளவே வரலாம் இப்போ பார்த்தீங்களா அந்த தானாக இயங்கக்கூடிய அந்த சிற்றூர்தி வந்து ஒன்று இருக்குது சிற்றூர்தி இல்லை இடையூர்தி அந்த வேகத்தை பார்க்கலாம் அவ்வளோ வேகம் ஆகுது அண்டு இதுதான் அந்த தானாக இயங்குறது பார்த்தீங்கன்னா வீதியில் வர்ற அந்த வாகனங்களுக்கு வழிவிட்டு நிற்குது இப்போ எல்லாம் போனால் பிறகு அது எடுக்குது அதாவது தானாகவே சிந்திச்சு இயங்கக்கூடிய மாதிரி ஒரு கருவி அது இந்த நிறு அமைப்பு நிறுவனம் நவ்யா ஆண்டு போட்டிருக்கு போய் அப்படியே சுற்றி வந்து இந்த இருக்கிற அந்த தரிப்படத்துக்கு வரும் அப்படியே அழகாக வருது சத்தங்க இருக்குது கதவுகள் திறக்குது உள்ளே இருக்கிறார்கள் இறங்குவினம் இதுதான் இந்த வழி தோற்றம் மேலுக்கு ஒரு கண்காணிப்பு கருவி இருக்குது முன்னுக்கு எல்லாம் உணரிகள் எல்லாம் வச்சுருக்கணும் பின்னாலே கண்காணிப்பு கருவி இப்போ வந்து இந்த இந்த இடத்துல இருந்து அங்கே வரைக்கும் அதில் தான் பேருந்து நிற்குது அதில் பேருந்து இல்லை இடையூர்ந்து அது வரைக்கும் அங்களை நடத்தி கூட்டி கொண்டு போயினோம் Was there any accident so far? No, 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 the only time the bus has ever hit anything is yeah. when a person has been manually operating it. So in autonomous mode, yeah. if something threatens the bus, we don't take a vert of action, we just stop. So. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to stand on the grass, you can just follow up to the 
flying with thin crews. If it starts to rain, we don't want that. So with our bus, all the sensors are on the vehicle. There's no uh, technology in the roads at all. So with our LIDARs, we use LIDARs, cameras, GPS and odometry. So a LIDAR is a light detection arrangement sensor. It works in the same way as a radar or a sonar, except that we use light. So the Velodyne um, gizmo up there is a three-dimensional LIDAR. And these are two-dimensional, so we have these here and down the side as well. So the difference between the three-dimensional and two-dimensional is the three-dimensional are multi-layered, so we've got 16 beams coming out of there, and the two-dimensional is mono-layered, so just one beam coming out of here and there. Now, we have 38 laser beams covering the bus because we have these on the back as well, so whatever is on the front is on the back. So the laser beams project to 100 metres out to the front, 30 metres out to the side, and that gives the bus a good idea of the environment it's working in. But we're only interested in 10 metres in front of us, 10, 15 metres in front of us, and 10 centimetres down each side. So the laser beam is spinning around at 20 revolutions a second, and they're pinging off objects in the environment. So that's how the bus can see. And together with the stereo vision cameras, the stereo vision cameras have two lenses, so they work like our eyes. So it produces a three-dimensional image, and that also um, can interpret the line marking, so the street signage, and uh, object detection. So at the moment, we don't have object recognition, we just have object detection. <laughs> that creates a point cloud map, so I can show you that when we jump on the bus. I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> With our uh, GPS up on the roof up there, we connect with up to 18 satellites at any one time. That keeps us accurate on our path till we've been uh, one centimetre. When we go past the park cars, you'll see how close we come to that. So that accuracy is really important. And then the data from the odometry sensors as well, that merges in with the GPS data. just in there pretending to be like a bird. <laughs> she will come around the entire vehicle in a moment when it's safe to do so. 
so you can see her walking all the way around we can pick up lots of things from the trees to the buildings to the bollards just along the side there and she will pop in in just a moment obviously a flightless bird yes a flightless <laughs> bird yeah <laughs> okay so if you wanted to face going forwards these are the two seats to sit in this is my very special seat that i operate from um but feel free to jump on any seat it's pretty oh, And then I'm going to press go. Make sure that it's still safe. And you are currently being driven by a computer. <laughs> so yeah. So Emily is holding a controller. She Where legally to has to do that. Okay, so we operate under a special permit. The permit says that the chaperone on board in charge of operation um, must be holding the controller, so, and it is an Xbox controller. Dungeons <laughs> <laughs> and Dragons, huh? Yes, I do a <laughs> game all day. The tuneless vehicles will be one of the biggest changes to France. You'll feel the vehicle speed up and slow down. The speeds are already in the uh, program. We've programmed them in when we did the part. So in appropriate areas will speed up and slow down. Sometimes the rain interferes with the lidars. It depends on how heavy it is um, and how many puddles there are. If we get splashes up on the two-dimensional lidars, sometimes this splash on the lidar uh, can seem like an object in front of the bus or at the side of the bus, so we'll stop. We just need to get out and wipe them down. So that's just a design thing at the moment. With Navia, they have designed the whole vehicle. So everything on it here comes from Navia. That's a French company. So they've been going for over 10 years now. So they designed the robotics, the computer system, which is Windows based, which is why we can use a Xbox controller um, and all the other stuff in it as well. So. It is a prototype, so that's why we can see all the roll bars. You can see bits of high gloves and stuff, and I think they're really hard. Which is okay for you, you're only here for 20 minutes. <laughs> yes, we're going to be all day. <laughs> but um, yeah, in the future, they will be uh, more aesthetic. Sweet. The bus with a difference. We've been down here in South Perth for nearly five years. August 2016 we started. So yeah, so it's been a long time. It started out as a three month trial. So we bought a bus, the RAC bought a bus from Namia with the intention to just do an independent trial of the technology because um, autonomous vehicles will be Mainstream one day. So uh, it's also an education program for the public. Anyone can jump on and have a look and find out about it. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, three months it was original, originally supposed to go for, but yeah, four and a half years later, still going. And there's no sign of that trial finishing. It's actually in project phase now. So RAC will be looking at other other automotive manufacturers that they control. So there's one in China, an autonomous vehicle manufacturer in China that they're looking at bringing um, one of their buses over here so we control that as well. So yeah, it's an ongoing thing. So interesting, you've had it for five years here and it's just done this thing that hasn't been migrated anywhere else. We've been to Bustleton and Geraldton, okay. so we've gone regional. Okay. And the thing is, uh, with our part, it is a pre-mapped part, right? So it's like when we map a part, it's when you take up a Google part and it's got LiDARs and GPS on it. And it maps the GPS coordinates and the LiDAR um, points. So it does that, but also because we don't have a steering wheel and pedal, we can't be licensed or registered. So we operate under a special permit that's got a lot of restrictions on it, and they come from the police department, the Department of Transport, um, the state government, so as, as well as South Perth Council as well. So getting all those places, um, places. Um, it's quite time consuming, but we have gone regional to Geraldton, we went there for three months, 
we were down in Busselton for two months and in those two different areas we were testing other things as well so Geraldton's got a lot of roundabouts um, firstly we went to Busselton we had one roundabout when we went to Geraldton we had 13 so for an autonomous bus to negotiate a roundabout is a big deal because you've got vehicles coming in and out you've got pedestrians so we had to um, use our priority zones and figure out how safe is it like when's the safe distance so the bus knew that once we were in the roundabout we had right away but if there was someone else in the roundabout we had to yield so it was a big accomplishment for an autonomous bus to do a roundabout so a lot of people can't remember just big foam bumpers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. What's the top speed on your motor model? This bus at maximum speed can only do 25. Okay. And we're governed to 20. So during the week, along this straight stretch here, we can get up to about 19.8. Okay. On the weekend, we go slower because there's more cars. There's more car cars, more people. So we go about 15 kilometres along the straight stretch. But yeah, at 25 kilometres max speed, you won't see this on a freeway or a highway, but around universities, hospitals, aged care facilities, airports, um, Curtin University use one. They've got one on campus and they study it as well. So UWA have just developed their own. So yeah, they're using one as well. So yeah. But this is the only on-road trial in Western Australia where the public can jump on board. So there's plenty of places where they're using them in private property, on private property, which they don't have the restrictions that we do. So uh, like mining, so on the mining, um, mining sites, it's all private property, universities, hospitals. On a government road, on a gazetted road, we have a lot of restrictions that we have to abide by. So. And the cost? Uh, 350,000 buys the vehicle, but you don't own the software. So you have to su subscribe for the software updates like you would um, any software company. So yeah, so we subscribe to Navia and they send us updates. We get patches and test the uh, software updates. And as our technology, as the LiDARs and the cameras and uh, things like that need replacing, we update with the latest version of that. So testing to make sure that all that is compatible with the new patches and everything. Yeah. So, you know, technology is like, you do, a, do an update and then something else doesn't work. <laughs> so, and we do, and he's good genius, but... <laughs> um, he, uh, he wanted to go that way but didn't wait for it. Um, so, but anyway. uh, now, this little bit here, you would have seen Emily pressing mm -hmm. the go button. So. Technically she wasn't operating, she was agreeing with the computer that it was safe to go. This road here gets really busy, it's an off ramp from the freeway. So with our permit, we have to stop at that T junction. So normally you just treat it like a give way because you can see you just go around. We have to stop and then we have to agree with the computer that yes, it's safe to go. Here we're doing a right hand turn, so we're going onto the wrong side of the road. Now with our permit, it says, it stipulates that we must not go on the wrong side of the road in autonomous mode. So the only way to do a right hand turn is either to do it manually or agree with the computer. So much easier to agree with the computer. Um, although when we take it back to the shed at night, we do sometimes do it manually, just drive it manually. So, yeah. so when you say take it back to the shed, it means that? Yeah, that's our back cave over there. So oh, right. that's, okay. um, and that, down at the end, down at the corner there, that's our, on the top of the shed there, on the roof. Yep. That is our ground-based station, so that's sending us corrections as well. So with our GPS, we're connecting with the 18 satellites, and sometimes the signals get distorted as they come through the atmosphere. We get ground-based uh, corrections that come to the bus, and that keeps us on our track, so yeah, our ground-based station. Is anyone popping out at the mill? No, yep. not enough seats to get back. No, that's right, we're full for the full rest for of the today. afternoon, so yeah. We'll, so. we'll drive down. Oh, yeah, four hours free parking there, so yeah. 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 So yeah, it There's is no, a really interesting thing. No cafes down here? No, no. they desperately need one. 
Um, Sorry, can I just get you to press the top green button? This way? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they do need one. And there is talk about one being built down at Mill as well. So that's just across that other side yeah. of the road there. But yeah, really interesting at the old mill. Um, yeah, a lot of interesting facts and a lot of Aboriginal history down here as well. So yeah, it's well worth a visit. Is this four wheel steer? It's two wheel drive, all wheel steer, yep. So yeah. If you are I just felt the boat felt it come out. Yeah, 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 yeah you can feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if you are outside watching it go around a corner or parking when it comes into park. Yeah, all the wheels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's, yeah, I know. Yeah, it feels funny. And it looks funny. <laughs> so again, because we're entering into the arterial flow of traffic, we have to agree with the computer. So when it's safe, Emily will just say, yep, let's go. And Frank. Now this is Frank. He is with us as well. It's stated in our permit that just in this area we have to have traffic management. <laughs> and he gets waved at 100 times. Yes, he does. <laughs> and he loves it too. <laughs> is the battery a big tall one or is it? No, it's um, an 80 volt lithium ion phosphate one. It's behind us there. It's a okay. box open door. So that takes up the whole back end there. Yeah. And the computers are down that end. So, yeah. But in uh, summer, the air conditioners really affect our battery. So, like today, uh, we could get about 100 kilometres of scrape running out of it if we're not using our air yeah. conditioners. The air conditioners really drag it down, so if we're anywhere in a hot climate, um, you know, on a hot day, that can drop down to 40 kilometres mm -hmm. of usage. So, yeah, we do have to be very careful. But the Lifeco 4 batteries are good. They, um, they have low or non-combustible parts, so the the chance of a thermal runaway is very small. With lithium ion phosphate batteries, they burn from the inside. So it's a, and that's called a thermal runaway. It's like a coal fire. So, and that's why they're so hard to put out. The firemen put it out, like, and they take tons and tons of water and put the flame out. And half an hour later, that will start okay. up again. So yeah, and that's because it burns from within. So with a LiPo 4 battery, it's low or non combustible part. So. And it's not emitting any toxic gases like a normal battery does. So, Just yeah. a problem to get rid of once they're worn out. Yeah, that's the problem. Um, yeah, like while they're in use, mm, right. it's sustainable. But to get rid of them, you know, highly toxic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then even to get the lithium out of the ground, it takes you know tons and tons of water to mine the lithium. So, yeah. but they're looking at all different sorts of batteries. You know. So yeah, you can see how close we are. So that ding ding is because there was a pedestrian? Yeah, so that was me. That was you. Yeah, that's I am yeah. yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm paying attention to anyone who might be coming out onto the road because oh. they can't hear us from the outside. Yes, yeah, right. Because we're an electrical vehicle. Right. Um, so you're the horn. Quite. Yes, I'm the horn. Yeah. 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 Although, <laughs> I don't use the horn as much. We, yeah, <laughs> we have a bell uh, and, and our horn says a totally different message. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> we save our horn for, for the very bad things. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Does fog affect the driving or no? The, the fog? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. So, in uh, Europe, uh, different areas, they're testing the different sensors in fog because we don't get much fog, not yeah. enough fog that would have stopped. Uh, vehicle, but um, yeah, it does. The lidars see the fog so as a solid object, and okay. also heavy tropical so rain. So yeah, so there are trials going on with snow, fog, heavy rain, black ice, all that sort of thing. The, the sort of climatic conditions that we don't get, but other places do. So yeah. And that just might mean using another sort of sensor. Like with the Tesla, Elon Musk, he doesn't like LiDARs, 
he'll use radars on his car, but when he's ground truthing his other sensors, he will use a LIDAR then. But he won't put them on his car, but a radar might be good for fog or snow, so... Yeah. Also the cameras, you know, like there's so many different cameras out now. With our cameras, well, all the technology actually on our bus is in tech terms quite old. We're about five years old, close to six. So in tech terms, we've got quite aged technology. Some of the cars out here have got better technology than us. The Subarus have got the thermal cameras now, so um, that would be nice if we had thermal. Different autonomous vehicles now have the more advanced LIDARs that can see 250 metres um, advanced, whereas ours only go to 100. So, yeah, all the technology is constantly being updated. So, yeah, amazing what they're doing over there. அப்ப இந்த இடையூர்தி இந்த பயணம் எல்லாம் பாத்திருப்பீங்க கடைசியில சான்றிதழ் எல்லாம் தெரியும் இந்த காணொலி வந்து நான் போய் வந்தது கொஞ்சம் நேரம் கூட அதை எழுமான அளவு சுருக்கி போடுறேன் விரும்பினாக்கள் பார்க்கலாம் அது சம்பந்தமான அடங்கின தகவல்கள் அனைத்தும் அதுலேயே அவர் சொல்லி கொண்டிருந்தவ அதை கவனிச்சிங்களா இந்த தகவல் தொழில்நுட்பம் சம்பந்தமாக அறிய விரும்பினாக்களுக்கு அது உதவியா இருக்கும் கல்வி சம்பந்தமாகவும் இது உதவியா இருக்கும் இந்த காணொலி எல்லாருக்கும் பிடிச்சிருக்கும் நினைக்கிறேன் மீண்டும் ஒரு நல்ல ஒரு காணொலியில் உங்களை எல்லாரையும் சந்திக